doing a price check here with the nest ball. I assume this is going to probably grab an ogre pawn, but two Regidrago V Star and the Dragapult prize. Also, canceling Cologne. Still playing the canceling Cologne. Uh, one question would definitely be like, how many Dragapults is Lucas running? If you only, some people only play one. And if you are only playing the one, it's prized. Uh, <laughs> it is prized. Also, I could see, and I have some people playing it. Um, uh, some people only play two Reggie Drago V Star. I don't know what the list for Lucas looks like here, but we'll see. How many Dragapult do you run in your list? I don't have a list right now. I would probably run two, though. Pricing it sounds kind of miserable. Also, increasing our odds of just like draw naturally drawing the card is a pretty big deal. Because Pult is just our best attacker. Goes for the squawk ability. It looked like there was a lot of trainers in hand. Yeah, goes for the squawk. So wants to get aggressive here. Goes up, Carlos. How long is the average match here? I don't know. Like this matchup probably goes pretty close to time usually. Like Charizard versus Drago. So 50 minutes ish. 50 ish minutes. Yeah, there's a Billy Bench the Hoot. Oh. Do research and a boss and the Noctowl hitting the discard pile. So we have to super rod the Noctowl back. I don't think I saw an. Oh, did we, is there an Ogre Pond in there? That's what we're looking for here is Ogre Pond. Did at least get the energy for turn. Okay, we have the Pond. There's a Grass in hand as well. Has an e-switch in the hand, I believe, as well. So you could accelerate one through the pawn, switch it up. But you want attachment for turn as well. So I think that's what Lucas is debating here. Do I draw with the pawn? Because you want to maximize your, your energy and play per turn. You don't want to whiff energy attachments. You can go for the pawn hit. So it's hoping to draw into like a vessel or an energy here. So you don't whiff the energy attachment for turn. Because otherwise, your e-switch is basically your attachment for turn. There's the e-switch. Do we have attachment for turn here from Lucas, though? Another Drago hits the field. No attachment for turn. That's rough. It's going to be a lot harder to set up for that turn two play. Okay. Let's see what uh, Ruki can pull off here. As the Arvin. I see a Duskull in the hand. We'll see the Poffin come out here for sure, probably. He's doing uh, some prize checking as well. Is that two Dustnor or is that Dustclops Dustnor? I wonder if it's a 101 Pidgeot line in this deck, in this list. No, it's a 202. And the B Barrel, and the Pheasant Dippity, and the Dustnor. What are you not playing? It's got to be a pretty thin Charizard line. Definitely three Charmander, probably. Notes being taken, writing down the prize cards. Oh, it could, oh there's three Charmander. It's probably a 3 1 2, right? It's probably pretty close. It doesn't. I don't see Rabska in there, so it's like probably not too ridiculously off of like towards Worlds list. But no Rabska. There's a Poffin. And then we're going to get some kind of tool card here. A-spec is the prime catcher, not the maximum belt. We're like, we've been seeing a lot of Charizards recently playing maximum belt. No no tool grabbed? Oh, there was no tool in there. There's the four seal stone and the four seal stone and the defiance band are literally in the hand. No tool to be grabbed, I guess. Makes sense. That those are the only other tools remaining. Do a quick discard check. Maybe he's thinking about how likely is it that like a Kirin play happens this turn. Do I want to go for double Poffin? We have Rotom Force Seal Stone, so we could double Poffin here if we want to. We're definitely going one Charmander, one Pidgey here. But you could get like third Charmander plus Bidoof maybe. You bench the Rotom and then use uh, Force Seal Stone to grab another Poffin. We'll see. He's shuffling up though, so I imagine that's probably not the case. He's just going to kind of hope for 
a whiff of a like devastating attack next turn. Now, if Lucas is playing something like if Lucas is playing like the build that John and Bradner played at Dortmund, then maybe doesn't even play the Halucha, which means the only way to KO double Charmander this turn for Lucas would be a Kiram play. But a Kiram play is pretty uh an aggressive Kiram play like that is pretty meh. It's like it's like okay. But the Noctowl does open the possibility for more aggressive back-to-back -back Kiram plays. Like someone mentioned in in chat. Research top deck. I don't know if there was a draw supporter in the hand besides that for Lucas. A second Ogre Pond comes down. And there goes the research. Goodbye, the draw. Oh, and another E switch? Ooh, all right, that's pretty brutal. That's tough. Two E switch in the discard pile after whiffing an attachment for turn on the first turn. That's not very efficient. That's not where you want to be as Drago. Pawn number one coming in. See another grass in the hand. Maybe a fire. Pawn number two is happening now. There's the Drago V star and a fire. It has the legacy star. If you actually want to attack this turn, you could just wait here as Lucas, but it does want to attack this turn. Here we go. Seven getting discarded. Uh, nothing too bad, to be honest. A couple vessels. I don't think that's an E switch. So you could just grab double E switch here, maybe. He's eyeing up one East, which you do need that if you want to attack this turn, but you do want to set up the potential of follow-up attackers. The only attacking option here is Dragapult. I mean, KO active, KO, Duskull, or Pidgey is still pretty good. The question is, which one do you go after in that situation? I feel like you maybe almost go after the Duskull, so that way your active can't get KO'd next turn. Goes for E-Switch research. The hand must be pretty dead. There's the E-switch making its way from the pawn to the active. And then here comes the Dragapult attack. It's the only option in the discard pile. And yeah, the question is, what do you KO? Do you KO the Duskull or do you KO the Pidgey? I kind of like going after the Duskull. So that way you, your active can't die next turn. You get to keep your active around for one more turn. I'm assuming that's what Lucas is deciding here between. What do you go for? Yeah, it goes for the Duskull. I like that. I think it's probably the better play. You don't like them having access to quick search the whole game, but you also don't want to... If you lose this Drago next turn, you're in trouble. Rookie seems to be eyeing up the supporters and the energy switches and does know that there's a research in the hand here. Um, Radzar Defiance would cook him right now. Radzar Defiance would be pretty brutal. And honestly, it might be possible... Oh, there's a decent amount of energy in the hand here. Defiance is in the hand. There's a lot of cards in the hand. We have four Seal Stone, Super Rod top deck. We could Ultra Ball away some fires and Super Rod him back to the deck, maybe. Yeah, Razar Defiance would be pretty would be pretty brutal here. You can loss impact the Pidgey later. It's probably fine, though. You just don't want Pidgey out to ever come online. Because like you can loss impact it later, but will you be able to hit loss impact later? You don't know. Um, so you always want to remove the Pidgey if you can. The question is, like, in this situation, though, like, Candy's Zard, Dusclops is, like, KO's your active, which is kind of annoying. But you do have the Ogre Pond follow-up to that, though, is the thing. You do have the Ogre Pond follow-up. So then you could go Ogre Pond, knock out the Charizard, and then progress from there. And then you just need to do, like, Radzard, KO, Rotom, or something like that, as long as it doesn't leave the field. So that's kind of, like, the, the choice there. But I see Liam in chat always remove the Pidgeot. So Liam thinks the Pidgey should have gone down there. If he's not running superior, chaining Ogre Ponds is tough. You don't need to chain Ogre Ponds. You just need to attack with an Ogre Pond into a Charizard. You don't need to get like a full chain going on. I feel like the the thought process has to be to attack with Radzard here. I mean, we could also just see Counter Catcher KO. We could just see a Counter Catcher KO off the bench. Um, I don't know how many energy are in the hand. That's why I was actually wondering if the Charmander should have been pushed up to put the energy back into the deck. The Rad's RKO here does seem really, really good because then we don't have our Charizard in our active. I don't... And Force Seal Stone hasn't been used, has it? It has, okay. So how could... Could we do it? Do we have the play? Ultra Ball. Yeah, we do have the play, right? Ultra Ball gets Radzard, bench Radzard, super rod the energy back to the deck. And then we also don't need to put another energy... Or I guess we won't have another energy on our Charizard. So that way, Ogre Pond can't Gust KO it. There's Arvin for Candy. 
no tool card to get, but it gets us the candy. That's all we need here. And then I assume there's enough fire energy in the deck. Otherwise, it'd be a really weird play to do to not if we don't have the fire energy to actually make the rats art KO. We'd probably want to go like counter catcher KO the bench to Ogre Palm with the grass. Um, Charmander and a fire. Honestly, that might be all we need. We don't want to overly clog the deck with useless cards. Will we even need another Charizard is actually honestly also a question. I don't even know if we need, we maybe don't even, shouldn't have even got that Charmander. The chance that we even need another Charizard isn't that high, to be honest. Um, it does want the option. Yep, there we go. Three fires to the Radzard. Has the Defiance Band in hand as the last card. It's a pretty big KO. And it can be responded to by an Ogre Pawn, but that's just a one prize knockout response. And that's so many resources now gone for Lucas. Uh, yeah, Lucas is definitely in a tough spot here for sure. Yeah, this is a tough spot for Lucas for sure. I mean, you can go Ogre Pawn knockout, but then you only get one prize card. And then uh, Haruki can respond with Charizard and then set up for another Radzard to just close out the game from there. I think it'll be tough. You have to E-switch to Ogre Pawn to get it to four, right? No, we currently, we do enough. We only need three here. He's thinking about the Drago push. If we can get to a Reggie Drago attack here, is that even good enough though still? Um, is that even good enough? If we Let's say we attack with Reggie Drago here. What do we attack with? We go Dragapult and then what? Draw one prize card. This damage spread on the bench Pokemon isn't that uh, big of a deal. I guess what you could do here is, Lucas, if you can attack with Dragapult, you can KO the active and put 30 on Pidgeot and then go Iono, Prime Catcher, Radzard, KO Pidgeot. That could be the play and then follow up with Ogre Pond, KO Charizard. So that is a line that I could see here from Lucas that could work out. You go attack with Dragapult, knock out active, put 30 on the Pidgeot, 30 somewhere else. I don't know. I don't care. Put it somewhere. And then go next turn, go Prime, Radzard, Counter catch or prime Radzard Iono KO Pidgeot and then load up a gra grass on Ogre Pond and then follow up with boss KO Charizard with an Ogre Pond. That's the only real play that I see here though. Uh, besides just hoping that Haruki just whiffs, which which could be a play. You could just hope that there's a whiff on the other side. All right, the pawns are getting involved. Uh, and you do need to find two E switch here from Lucas as well. All right, Dippity's making its way to the bench. Temple of Sinnoh. There's a Research and an Iono in hand. I mean, this turn does not feel great, though, so I feel like it's going to be a Research. Yeah, I don't even know if there's any Iono left here for Lucas. That could be the that could be the second Iono. It feels like we need one more. Oh, nope, there we go. There's an Iono. There's a Switch. There's a Prime Catcher. We still have the Pheasant Dippity draw. There's an E-Switch. All right, it's coming together a little bit here. Here we go. Accelerate to the Ogre Pond. I guess you could... Oh, hold on. You could Prime Catcher KO Radzard this... Or Charizard this turn with Ogre Pond, actually. Is that the play? Oh, no. We already attached return to the... We already attached return to the Reggie Drago. We could Prime Catcher punch it for 300 and then... Boss Rotom with Drago and attack with Dragapult to KO Rotom and Charizard in the same turn. But then we have to hope for, like, no kind of Turo play or anything like that. All right. Noctowl's coming out here. There's the E-Switch find. I see the boss in the deck. And the switch is in the hand. So the line that I was talking about, I think, is available here to Lucas. As we see the, see the E-Switch Ultra Ball grabbed, I think the line that I was talking about is available to Lucas here. Now, you might get Iono next turn, which might, might, might make it hard to piece together, though. It might make it hard to piece together. Cost of getting an Ogre Pond set up at this point is like super high. Did you just find Turo? Yeah. Oh, gives up the Iono. I feel like that was a big piece for the for a following disruption turn. Well, now I'm curious what play is Lucas going for here? Oh, is Lucas going for Tina KO Pidgeot into Rad's RKO Rotom? That might be the play here actually from Lucas. Is going for Ooh, okay. I like that play as well. That's a good play. We're going. Tina KO Pidgeot this turn. Take away the quick search. And then next turn, we're going to go chase down that Rotom to win with Radzard. We have a boss left. We have the Radzard. Okay, this works. Gives up the switch there. That seems fine. 
continuing to thin out the deck. He's heavily playing around like the possibility of Iono, I feel like, here. Haruki has Toro in hand. Wait, does Haruki actually have Toro in hand? Did we get off the prize cards? Did we not want to use that switch here? We could have used switch here. I don't know about that play there from Lucas. I feel like we could have used the switch. I assume that's the play that Lucas is now going for. Did Lucas mess up by not keeping the switch? Because now we have to loss on two energy and we have to retreat in energy. I, I feel like the switch should have been comboed with the prime catcher here. Unless Lucas is going for something else. But now we have to loss on two energy off our active, which means the Drago becomes immobile for or unusable for a turn. Yeah, this is a mistake here from Lucas to discard the switch instead of using the switch. Because now we, when we use Tina's attack here, we have to discard two energy off of our uh, our active Drago, which means Haruki can just do nothing for a turn and just be like, okay, pass. I'm going to wait uh, until you attach like another energy to your active or something. We needed to have another energy on our active Drago here to like actually threaten with the, the Reggie Drago so that way you force a knockout from Haruki. But Haruki doesn't have to take a KO this turn now. That was actually a big mistake there from uh from Lucas to not keep the switch and use the switch. Because we could have let we could have had kept a fire on our active here. Alright, there's some counting going on for from Haruki. Should count there's four E switch gone, which means there's no threat next turn. Nothing can attack next turn. The only <laughs> the only supporter left is a boss. And I think, I think Lucas doesn't, I think Lucas, was Lucas, did Lucas prize double super odd? Or at least one of them, right? We haven't seen any super odds happen. Rod's RKO active works again, no? No, it can work, but Haruki doesn't have to do anything. The thing is, Haruki doesn't have to do anything this turn. That's the, that's the important thing here is Haruki could just pass and wait for a better play. Like, Haruki could draw three with Rotom, be like, wait, my hand sucks. You can't do anything next turn. Draw three with Rotom. Um... But we have Turo on Rotom plus Knockout with Radzard, which seems pretty good. But then you don't have an... Maybe... No, Haruki should maybe draw three with Rotom this turn first. And then go for the, the Knockout plus Turo next turn. Because right now, if the Ra if our Radzard gets KO'd, we don't have a response. Here from Haruki. So I feel like Haruki should just draw three with Rotom. I guess like you risk maybe an Ogre Pond getting too much energy on it then, though. Maybe you risk an Ogre Pond getting too much grass attached to it. But now Lucas could KO Radzard with Radzard, and then Haruki might whiff the fire next turn. So Haruki could have drawn three with Rotom this turn and then attacked next turn, which would have been interesting. Um, no E switches, right? No, but like over time, you could eventually build up an Ogre Pond that can respond to a Charizard. Like you could just manually attach twice. Or manual attach plus use its ability plus manual attach. So now there's no win condition right now for Lucas. So I feel like Lucas just has to go KO Radzard with Radzard and hope Haruki does not have a fire energy, which Haruki currently doesn't have. But the, the thing is that Lucas is about to deck out. So Luke does, Lucas doesn't have that much time. There's a draw one off. There's the Radzard draw, but we could have nest balled for that. So you could have nest balled for the Radzard and then tried to draw into the fire. I assume there's a fire left in the deck here. Unless I'm tripping. I feel like Lucas probably should have played the Nest Ball and then used the Ogre Pond ability there. That was a missequence there from Lucas. Because I think you need to put on the pressure. You need to attack this turn. Is that even enough, though? I feel like Lucas never has enough. Unless there's like a super odd prize here and we can get that out of the prize cards by killing Radzard with Radzard. But see, this is what I was talking about with... Um, I guess Lucas could just attach pass and then go attach attack knockout the active with the Ogre Pond, to be honest. We could do that. I actually kind of like that play here from, from Lucas. Attach pass. Yeah. Okay. This is why I almost want to see the, the draw three happen last turn from Haruki with the Rotom to give us more options going into this turn. I want to see Haruki, instead of using the Turo immediately, use Rotom to draw three because we know we're safe for a turn. See what Lucas does. And then with those three new cards, figure out how you want to approach the game from there. And now we're in a situation from Haruki where we're kind of stuck for a turn with no options. And now we have to take this turn to get up our options, find our options. But now, you know, Lucas has a little bit more of developed board. But I don't know if it actually will matter here. Can Lucas get... Lucas could actually KO Zard next turn now, right? Um, yeah, Lucas can go ability, grass, attach, fire. Yeah, Gus KO the Charizard here now. 
<clears throat> yeah, I really think Haruki should have taken that last turn. Should have taken a turn off on the last turn to just draw three and like chill for a turn and like find more options. Does Lucas have any gusts? Lucas does have a boss. Lucas has, Lucas has boss grass fire, I think, left. Actually, I don't I don't know if Lucas has a grass left. I think Lucas does have a grass left. There's the pass. The top deck is. I can't tell. Oh, but the Radzar can attack again now. So now, now Lucas has to boss. Lucas has to boss here. You have to boss the Charizard here. Because otherwise Radzar just wins the game. Or you retreat to Knock Towel. Uh, but that can't that's never a win condition because there's no two prizes for your Radzard to KO. So it has to be boss Radzard and pass. And then hope Haruki cannot move this Radzard. Haruki also did not grab Bidoof there, which is interesting. Maybe it's prized, but like Having the potential of B-Barrel seems pretty good on this next turn. I mean, it's got to be a pass here. Lucas is, like, overcooking here for sure. There's a pass. Could have, like, played the Ultra Ball or the Vessel or something just thin out the deck. Dusknor top deck from Haruki. There's the Rotom. Could have drawn with Rotom last turn as well. Now is just deciding to go for the Rotom draw, but I think this means Lucas has guaranteed game. Lucas will either have the Radzard boss or draws gra Grass, Accelerate Grass, get fire. As long as there's a Grass in the deck. I can't tell. I don't know for sure if there's a Grass. I think Lucas has game here now, though. Draw grass, accelerate grass, becomes fire, fire, attach, attack. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the play there was, we can go back and look at it while they set up for game two. Here, I'm going to run the ads going before game two starts as well. So you guys don't get them in the middle of the game. Um, This this play right here is the is the play. Um, like Haruki, right, right here, Haruki knows Lucas cannot do anything next turn. Lucas cannot attack next turn with anything. Lucas can't attack with anything next turn. So with that in mind, instead of turrowing the Rotom right now, because Haruki knows if I attack with Radzard, I can't do anything next turn because my hand sucks. Um, well, unless you like, maybe the prize cards could have been a factor. What did Haruki prize? I guess that could have been a question. Okay, Haruki did prize a fire energy. So I guess you could make the argument that Haruki should could play for this fire that's prize, and then Charizard can attack all of a sudden. So maybe it's not that bad to go for the prize cards there as Haruki, because we did prize a fire energy. Um, because we did prize the fire, going for the two prize knockout, 50-50 on getting the fire. If we get the fire, we just win. Okay, I don't hate it as much anymore. Um, I don't hate it as much anymore. But we still could have taken, we still maybe could have taken that turn off just drawn through with Rotom. Just have more options going into our next turn. Because we know Lucas is completely tapped of resources. Actually, the more I think about it, the more I like the Rotom, the draw of three with Rotom play. Because Lucas is down Switch and Prime Catcher and Legacy Star. There's no way for Lucas to move the active Drago. So you, have, you can sit there and force Lucas to attach to the active and then knock it out. Um, you could like wait until Lucas literally attaches to the active there. The more I think about it, the more I like Haruki, I think, waiting. Um, because I feel like you have a higher, a higher than 50% chance of winning the game as Haruki if you wait. I feel like you have a higher than 50% chance of winning the game if you wait as Haruki, than if you, um, you have a higher percent chance of winning if you just, like, pass and, like, make Lucas do something. With, with a board state where Lucas can basically not do anything. Alright, here we go, though. Game three. Haruki is going first. Um, I did freeze for a second. Prize cards, two grass and a fire and an ogre pawn. Charizard, four seal stones prize. That's a big one. And there's a temple prize for Lucas. That's not as big of a deal, though. That is not as big of a deal. Let's see what Haruki does. No Charmander. No, no thing. Uh, what is the other one called? Yeah, I don't remember what the other one's called. Rotom. <laughs> but for Lucas, it's play prime instantly and then research. Switch is also gone, so both pivot cards are gone. Dragapult immediately hits the discard pile as well. There's an Ogre Pond found. We're accelerating a grass. We do have a grass in hand for an attachment for turn, and there's no threat on the other side from Haruki. There's no there's no turn two threat. So Lucas is uh is pretty safe here. Debating benching a second Drago, or is that an Ultra Ball being played? It looks like an Ultra Ball. Kiram and discard pile, yeah. Kiram already in the discard. Kiram and Dragapult in there already. Pretty good. The hand actually there for... Lucas is kind of dead. Is eyeing up that Hoot Hoot. I don't hate the Hoot Hoot here. I do hate the Hoot Hoot in general, but I don't hate it here. Let's go for the Hoot. It would have been nice to be able to get into that Cleffa, but... Going to the discard pile here. Cleffa on this turn with that two-card hand. All of our switch cards are gone, though. We didn't have it in that opening hand, so... Goodbye, Cleffa.
We do have our attachment for turn. Oh, we have Vessel Awake. Oh, even better. So we can get a fire here and a grass. And I believe there is an E-Switch in the hand here for Lucas. So we can attach fire active, E-Switch grass from the bench, Ogre Pond to the active. And it's looking pretty good here for Lucas, to be honest, going into turn two. Has the Knock Towel. Get any two trainer cards. Research will probably be one of those. Maybe another E-Switch comes with that. Um, I guess we don't need another E-Switch in this situation, though, because we do have the one in hand. Um, there's a the fire. And the pass. All right. Haruki needs a... Needs a, needs a turn here. I, was, I don't even want to say, like, needs a pretty big turn. Just needs, like, a turn. We need to get Pidgeot established. Would be nice. I think I see Candy or Arvin in the hand. So I imagine we got Pidgeot here. Then we got to start to build up some Charmanders or progress to have the threat of the Radiant Charizard. Like, Bench Radiant Charizard plus Attach this turn doesn't seem terrible. But we want to get some Charmanders down as well. Duskull, I think, at this point is probably not something we care that much about putting into play, to be honest. I don't know if we're, like, that concerned with putting Duskull in play at this point. We do have the Candy. Okay, there's that Candy Pidgeot. And there's an Iono in the hand. He might just be going into Iono here. But... Haruki knows Lucas only has a two-card hand. But Lucas also didn't Ultra Ball for Squawkabilly and Ultra Ball for Hoot Hoot. So I think that means, as Haruki, you know there is a Research or a Knock Towel in the hand here for Lucas. Um, it doesn't mean you want to give them more cards to work with. You want to force the Knock Towel use out of them, probably. Um, so yeah, there's the Poffin Search off the Quick Search, which I think means that uh, Haruki is not going to be actually playing the Iono this turn. It goes for a Charmander and a Duskull. So it does go for the skull. Actually, with Switch and Prime Catcher gone, bossing up the Hoot Hoot is actually not bad because you kind of force the Legacy Star or another E-Switch to be played. So just boss up Hoot Hoot here is kind of chill. Oh, he's going for the Iono. Oh, because we want to get the Mist onto the Duskull. Yo, the Mist, mist onto the Duskull is so cheese. That's so cheese. Okay, so we really want to get the Mist on the Duskull. That's why we pop in before the Iono. Okay, I don't hate that. That is hella cheese, though. Protect the Duskull from this Dragapult snipe. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Another Poffin coming in here. I assume some more Manders are on the way. We'll see, though. Double Sinnoh about a carry. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if the Double Sinnohs make a make a difference here. Although this board is set up to be Kiram, though. Like, Kiram here. Wipe out Double Charmander Duskull. Did Lucas have an E-Switch and not play it out of that last hand? That was a mistake there from Lucas if Lucas did have that. I think Lucas had an E-Switch. And didn't play it. I kind of want to go back and check that. I feel like that was definitely a mistake. I'll be able to see the hand here. It's so hard to see the hand in these situations. Yeah, we can't tell. All right, we should e-switch immediately off the rip here, though, from Lucas and into an Iono. Okay, so Lucas does need a couple pieces here to put a, an attack together. There's a Vessel. I can't tell what else. Was that a second Hoot Hoot? Is this a 2-2 two -two Knock Towel, Drago? You tell me that's not a second Hoot Hoot. Is that a second Hoot Hoot? It ain't so. We're hooting 2-2 two, two, Knock Towel. Holy smokes. All right. Ogre Pond draw here. There's the Legacy. Or there's the Drago. Excuse me. There's an Attach. Just Kiram here, right? You have Legacy Star as a backup. This is this is the time for Kiram. Yep. And uh, Lucas is lining up. Nice Mist Energy. The boy is still going down, though. Three prize cards with Pheasantipity trapped in the active. Still. Still trapped in the active. He didn't have E-Switch, but did have Noctowl. I thought it was Noctowl E-Switch, but I could be wrong. Sinnoh is found, but don't need it anymore. Nest Ball and a Fire. Two Grass and an Ogre Pond trapped in the prize cards. Still, those are definitely the more important prize cards here, I feel like, for Lucas. Those are, like, the important ones. And that was a full-on squad wipe with le without Legacy Star used. Without Legacy Star used here. Thornton is good here. Thornton is good here. If there is a Thornton play, you would need a lot, though. I, although, I do see Candy Charizard literally in the hand. Um... Candy Charizard is literally in the hand here. Thornton Defiance Band KO? 
Now it does need to be a defiance ban though. But even actually Thorn Thorn Boss or Thorn or Thorn Countercatcher KO Ogre Pond is still pretty good. Radzard can't attack this turn. Well, hold up. I say that, but I guess that's not true. You could Thornton. You could Thornton the Bidoof into Char or Charmander. Candy Charizard, load up the Radzard, Defiance Band. Now, the thing with Thornton, though, is you can't play, you can't play Arvin to find the Defiance Band. So some kind of Counter Catcher or Defiance Band play is possible here. Oh, or Prime Catcher. I see the Prime Catcher. Prime Catcher is in Haruki's hand. So we could go Thornton Prime Catcher. We have Candy Razard in the hand here for Haruki. So it's, it's got to be the quick search for the... Now the question is, how do you... I guess you get the Pheasant Dippity out of play, right? You can go Thornton the Dippity into a Charmander. Candy Charizard. Load up the Charizard. And then Prime Catcher KO Ogre Pond with Charizard. I think that's probably the play here from... Because if you do it with Radzard, then the Radzard just dies. I don't think we want to give up. We want to make the we want to make Lucas work for the prize cards. So I like the. I mean, you could still get an Ogre Pond set up with E switches to return KO the Charizard. Maybe you do attack with Radzard still. Yeah, maybe you do attack with Radzard still. <clears throat> but I could see just Charizard KO Ogre Pond here being the play. All right, here it comes Thornton. What is the target? Is it Beedoof or is it Pheasantipity? You really, I don't, I don't like the idea of Pheasantipity staying in play. That's like a two prize liability moving forward. Oh, get rid of the Fez. Oh, get rid of the Fez, right? I guess Beedoof can just kind of die to. Beedoof just can can kind of go down to like a Dragapult spread. Maybe that's what we're playing around here. But Fez can go down to Radzar in the late game. Here comes the triple energy load up. Two to the Radzard, that's all we need. I assume one to the Charizard. But you don't have to attach the second one to the Charizard, so you stay at Ogre Pond range. There's the Defiance Band. If we had found Defiance Band here from Haruki, KO the Active was... Uh, that would have been really good, I feel like. KO Active was the play for sure. But we don't have the Defiance Band, so we're going to have to settle for a Prime KO on that bench Ogre Pond. But that's still not bad. Uh, the question is, what do you KO it with? And it looks like it is the Radzard from here from Haruki. I think there's like a debate. You could like you could go with Charizard. The thing is, like Radzard dies. Yeah, the th I don't actually like the Radzard here because Lucas is on three prize cards, so Radzard dies to Drago, which is not good. Radzard just dies to Reggie Drago here. I wonder how many uh, Ogre Pond Lucas actually plays because we we know there's like a two-two Knock Towel in there. Now there's an Ogre Pond in the discard pile. There's an Ogre Pond prized. I think his nest ball or some of the nest balls coming up here will probably be pretty telling of how many. Um, oh, wait, do we need the third energy there? No, we don't need that third energy there, though. Do we? The third energy on the Radzard here? Yeah, the Fez can die later to Radzard, but I guess the Bidoof could die right now. But you don't... Lucas doesn't really want to take two single prize knockouts here. Um, why do you attach a third to the Radzard? So I think it, I think he wants the possibility to be able to retreat it in case Lucas does nothing. So then he could go retreat, attach to Charizard attack. It's probably why he went with the attach to the active here. So we can retreat it and then attach. Because um, he already used his Prime Catcher, so that's like his pivot card. Uh, maybe plays Turo, uh, possibly, but... I don't hate this. I don't hate this choice here from Haruki. All right, the Pheasant Dippity draw here from Lucas. Lucas needs a Lucas does have Legacy Star, but still needs a lot this turn. We have the Fire Energy. That's an Owl, though. That's two Owls. A lot of Owls, man. This is a lot of Owls. We need some Pawns. Lucas is in need of Pawns. Not a Pawn. Also, some Recovery, honestly. Getting some Energy back into the deck wouldn't be a bad thing. Owls out. Nest Ball and Super Rod coming into play. Oh, maybe not the Nest Ball. Might go for the Vessel instead. Once again, still has Legacy Star to work with. So Lucas just needs to KO this Radzard. And then needs to go for a two-prize knockout. And now that the Pheasantipity is in... Oh, man, I really don't like that Pheasantipity. <laughs> I really don't like that the Pheasantipity stayed. Um, but I guess, like, Lucas could have set up a similar play. 
I don't know, but you could always quick search and you could always quick search for Turo and like Turo the Pidgeot out of play. But I guess I don't know if Haruki plays the Turo. No, no, no. We know Haruki plays Turo. Yeah, I, the Pheasant Deputy being in play because now Lucas can attack with Dragapult and set up Pidgeot and Pheasantipity to die. And then also the Charizard dies to Ogre Pond. So like, hmm, that's tough. I guess with this board set, you only give up one prize card as Haruki, though. Because if you do the Pidgeot attack, if you do the Bidoof, if you leave Bidoof in play, and we're going to Legacy Star here. Should we have Legacy Starred before? I wonder. Legacy Starred before we use the Owl? Maybe. I guess we have more inner cards in the deck that we don't like to see in the deck. <clears throat> It feels like Lucas could have maybe progressed this turn a little bit further before using Legacy Star here. He's going for Nest Ball plus Prime. No E-Switch, though. We have no e oh, no, we have. Do we have two E-Switch in hand? Actually, maybe I take that back. I say we have no E-Switch, but we actually have... Well, you can't play that. <clears throat> Super odd. Then we have Vessel in hand. Okay, okay. Prime might be for the next turn to set up for the Radzard finish. So we are just trying. I think Lucas is going to attack with Dragapult here, knock out the active, set up some damage on Pidgeot. And then there's Pheasant Dipity and Pidgeot in play for targets. But if Haruki had attacked or had turned the Pheasant Dipity into the Charizard and kept the Bidoof, then this turn Lucas could go for a double KO there. But then there's no setup on it. Yeah, the more I think about it, the worse the Pheasant Dipity is. I guess this line allows Haruki to leave a Radzard in the active next turn, though. Like, Lucas goes knock out the active, put 30 or 60 on Pidgeot, whatever. And then Haruki can go recover Radzard, attack with Radzard, and Lucas doesn't win by KOing Radzard. If you go the Bidoof route, then you can't use Radzard again. You have to push up a Charizard, and the Charizard could die to an Ogre Pond. All right, here we go. Pawns are happening. The two E-Switch are in hand. So the, the, the Dragon Ball attack is set up here from Lucas. And then after that, Lucas is looking for Prime Catcher Radzard to win the game. Um, so this should be the play here from Lucas should be the Dragapult attack. Uh, if you can get Radzard on the bench here, I think you maybe should bench it. Uh, I think I would bench it here as Lucas. Just get it into play. It's one less card you need to find later. Is your Radzard dying? Doesn't matter. Yeah, here it comes down. And then Dragapult attack, knock out the active. We need to put at least three on the Pidgeot because that sets up for the Radzard play. And the other damage, I honestly don't know where it should go. Maybe on the Charizard. Does anything matter for, matter for like Ogre Pond? Later on. Yeah, three on the Pidgeot. And I don't know if it really matters. You put one on the Pheasant Dippity, so it dies to Dragapult attack later. Uh, does the Ogre Pond math? The Ogre Pond math actually does matter to KO Charizard. It should probably go on the Charizard here because the Ogre Pond math would matter, right? Because we can get up to 150 with the Ogre Pond. Um, so yeah, it should be three on three on Pidgeot, three on Charizard. Should be the play here from, from Lucas. Okay, a possible play here from Haruki. Could actually be, this would be a lot, but Haruki could get, hear me out, Radzard, Phil Bench, Defiance Band, with Duskulls and Charmanders, collapse the way Pheasant Dippity, Turo Pidgeot, knock out the active. Um, now that's pretty unlikely, but that is a the only line I can think of where Haruki sets up a stable board state to combat what uh lucas can do that's the only that's the only thing i can think of <laughs> that's the only thing i can think of i don't i don't know if haruki plays collapsed we know haruki plays turo there was nest ball and fail so not even going to put anything in play here wants to avoid liabilities or other options i guess for lucas to win interesting that almost makes me feel like lucas or haruki is not there's the Iano. So no Turo. No Turo possibility here. Yeah, there's no Tur Turo possibility now. Now that we're going in with the Iono. It comes down to... Jeez. There's Collapse. That's not going to matter. There's Defiance Man. There's Fire. I mean, you have the attack with Radzard. You have... Oh, we still have Dippity. Hold up. Hold There's more. There's Ultra Ball. Okay, we can attack with Radzard here. We can quick search for Super Odd. So we got the Radzard attack here as as Haruki, which is actually a bigger deal than I was giving it credit for. It's actually a pretty big deal to um, go for that knockout. Goes for Countercatcher. 
Are we gonna counter catch a KO Fezendipity? Ooh, oh, okay, okay. I like this play. Right? This is actually probably the better play. Counter catch a KO Fezendipity is probably the better player. I don't know how many E-Switch Lucas has left, but it might be zero, which means the Ogre Pond's not even a threat to your Charizard at this point anyways. And there's no win can like Drago itself can't win this on this attack. There's no attack that Drago can use this turn that just wins the game. So yeah, I like this play from I like this play from Maruki here. Um, if there is one E switch left, then that does open the possibility of an Ogre Pond E switch play, but I think it might be zero. Yeah, the draw power on on Lucas's side is super limited, and I, I don't think Lucas plays Mew, so like Ultra Balls and Nest Balls aren't even live for more draw power here. There's the attach. No reason to do anything else here, I don't think, from Haruki. Just take the knockout. Go down to two prize cards remaining. Oh, pass? What is Haruki waiting for? Is Haruki waiting to retreat into, Ra into Radzard and attack with Radzard? Or can Haruki set up for a board clear play this turn? We have the collapse in hand. Can Haruki clear the board? If Haruki can clear the board this turn, that'd be sick. We have the Turo in hand as well, right? I think we have Turo. Briar? Dusknor. Or does Haruki play Briar? I just am not even thinking about Briar because so many people have cut Briar. Haruki does play the... Yeah, the Briar! Wait, but does Haruki have everything to do it? Do we have Candy Dusknor in hand? The Briar play is sick. There's the Ultra Ball. Here comes the Dustnor. You have to play Briar first, though. Just make sure you don't pop Dustnor. Wait! Oh, but you can't Briar and Arvin. Wait, we can't Briar now, though. So is it just pass? Is Haruki going to go Candy, Duskull, pass? And then pl play it for the next turn. Okay, we are, we are just passing here, then. Okay, pass. Does Lucas top deck this turn? Hand is still... It works. It works. You just got to wait two turns. <laughs> There's the pass. There goes the briar. There pops the dust snore. Ooh. The big combo at the end. Yeah, that was a pretty sick play. That was a pretty sick lineup. Just wait. Bring it up. Wait. I honestly... Yeah, I didn't even think about the briar as like the, the option there.